When a person hears the word management for the first time, he always has fears, because it often means discipline, strictness, and many restrictions. But with the book The Practice of Management by Peter Drucker, the whole concept changes, and management becomes a practice, and an art. It is a real book that discusses management as a whole, and describes it as a distinct function, and a specific work. It talks about running a company, managing directors, and discusses how decisions are made. Therefore, Peter Drucker has introduced the concept of management in an unprecedented way despite the presence of important writings and books before it, so this book introduced the successes or failures of companies and institutions, which made those interested in this type of work realize the importance of management and seek to improve and develop their performance. The Practice of Management by Peter Drucker Management has its own nature that differs from the rest of the elements of life. However, there is a great overlap between it and a group of related concepts, perhaps the most famous one is the word leadership. Is leadership the same as management? To answer this question, we have to distinguish between the two words. Theoretically, we can distinguish between management and leadership. But practically, This is difficult, because no one disputes that whoever runs an institution or company must have all the leadership qualities, otherwise how will he manage his human and material resources. What we must understand in this context is that management cannot be acquired by a person from examples around him, nor from courses that states how important the management is. But management is something else, as it is more like the energy and ability that a person acquires from his continuous practice with his surroundings and the various situations he passes through. This makes management closer to acquired qualities and given talents than to knowledge in its precise and strict concept. And whenever management is turned to applying strict practices, it loses all its noble meanings. It is an art and skill that only those with exceptional talents and abilities can master. Bit to remember, Management consists of acquired qualities and abilities that are far from being a strict science. To know the meaning of company management, we need to ask the following question, what is a company? To answer this question, we say that the company is managed by people and not by forces. Profit is not always the objective, logical condition of economic activity. This means that we cannot always define the company through profit and gain because the profit maximization theory is nothing but a complicated way to paraphrase the old phrase buy low, sell high. This theory is based mainly on the assumption that profit is the main goal of the company, but maximizing the profit is the strategic goal of many researchers, and this does not mean underestimating the profit, but only to show that the goal of the company is not specifically profit, but rather, it is a constraining factor. The result of the company is specifically innovation, marketing and productivity, and at the same time, it is testing this performance. This leads us to consider management as a rational activity, which means that the company should set goals that express what it wants to achieve, and not what it aims to adapt with when it happens. Bit to remember, profit is not always the objective logical condition of the economic activity of the company. The organization is not an end in itself, but rather it is a means to reach a specific goal, which is achieving the desired results. Herein lies the importance of the structural organization of the company. Any wrong structure leads to obstructing the company's work, and its path. So when the starting point is be wrong you must not wait for good results. There are three ways to determine the type of structure needed to achieve the objectives of a company which are, activity analysis slash decision making analysis slash relationship analysis. Activity analysis, it means that the company has specific objectives of typical functions, which can be applied to everything without prior analysis. And in this is marketing, engineering, accounting. Decision making analysis, the analysis of the decisions necessary to achieve the performance needed to achieve the objectives. Relationship analysis, with whom does the manager work? What contributions should he make to the managers responsible for other activities? 
bit to remember, the structure of the company is very important in achieving its goals. A special manager needs to be characterized by a set of characteristics. The most important one and that is referred to by many experts, we find what Henri Fayal talked about when he said that the most important aspect of management is control, and others pointed out the importance of implementation, thinking and leadership. Despite the importance of all these characteristics, the manager has two specific tasks that no one else in the company can perform, and whoever performs them automatically acts as a manager. The manager is responsible for the task of recruiting the best employees that can work together in harmony. Here we can compare the manager to the conductor, although each instrument in itself represents nothing but noise, yet the conductor of the orchestra has the composer's note in front of him. The manager is also responsible for achieving consensus among each decision or action between the requirements of the far future and the near future. Most managers spend their time on things that are not at the core of management. But a successful manager is the one who sets goals, analyzes activities and relationships, motivates, communicates, and develops his employees. Bit to remember, a successful manager doesn't spend his time doing things that aren't at the core of management.